I love lighting things up. Cause when it's dark, it's scary and I pee my pants. <laughs> Finally, there is no escape this time, Oz. Uh, Nether Oz? But I oh no, I've fallen far enough of your tricks. But I haven't let everything up. I no, you listen to me. Every time I let you talk, I end up dead. I've been knocked off of scaffolding by a pig. Had an anvil dropped on my head. Blown up by a creeper? Exactly. Wait, that wasn't worth it. Oh. So, I guess I have to repair all this damage myself? A little help? McBacon? No? Okay. Awesome! Fun! Hello, you wonderful dudes, dudettes, and dudes who defy description. I am Oz, this is Awesome Fun, and welcome to our Agency Fortnite Build. Over a series of tutorials, I will show you, block by block, how to create everything you see here. The buildings, terraforming, interiors, vehicles, and even a secret vault. Every episode is chapterized to help you navigate to where you need, and all the materials are listed in the description. This is a close approximation of the Fortnite agency, but not 100% exact. Thanks to Ashton, who requested this build in the comments. Right. Let's get into it. As a quick reminder, this is part two of four for the interiors of our agency build, following on from the four parts. Uh, that's too many four parts, isn't it? Okay, let's say this is part six, okay? <laughs> so if you haven't already seen part five, where we're laying out the floor plan for this basement here, you need to go back to the last episode. There's a card in the top. That tells you that and of course in this episode if you want to skip around we'll be finishing off all the interior sort of stairways and floors and mainly working on the big large buildings so if you look below in the description there are chapters to help you navigate around if you're just wanting to build one specific part of this mahusive agency build but other than that grab your blicks and uh, let's get a blocking no to that be grab your blocks and let's get bricking do you know what? I don't like it either way. Let's get on with the, <laughs> the show. That's our basement all bricked up. And I just made sure to put torches on top of there in it, temporarily just to make sure nothing jumps down on us at some point. So with this bit down here done, we can now head up and finish off the floor plan for the last bit of this building here. So we'll start up in this corner here where it goes downstairs and we're just going to bring the wall along. We'll need to make it a double thick wall here and we want this for now to be a total height of 5. So I'll give you an idea of where it needs to go and then of course you can build it up yourself. So we're going to come along there and we're going to stop at this point here and break out 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 then grab our polished andesite stairs and place them along like so. Now we want these stairs to go down for a total of eight, down to the bottom for eight. So there's our stairs in, oh jeez, <laughs> that enderman scared the pants out of me. Uh, so yeah, there's our stairs going down for eight and then following on from the stairs, we'll bring along the entire, what's Oh jeez, there's mobs everywhere it sounds like. Now we can bring that wall along, we'll put it in the doorway later on. We'll also want to, uh, you know I actually, this is the one room I don't think I even know what goes in here. Uh, I don't know if this was in the agency video, but never mind. Um, so we're going to bring this wall to connect round to here like this. So just around the top of the stairway and then bring all of this walls up to five like you see there. Now we'll come down the stairs here and in line with the bottom of the stairs we're going to put our polished blackstone slabs along for five and then on each side we're going to come out for another five. So five down this side, five on the other side and that'll give us a total of 15 that you can see. Now we're wanting to go that way for a total of 10 so that's 15 by 10 and fill that central bit in. 
And of course, we're then, after we've done that, going to come to the top edge, put down five, and then put in another five out this direction. So you're going to have a five by five square stuck on to the top corner and repeat this on the other side as well. So it's just mirrored over there. Now that we've got the floor plan for this vault area, we're going to use our quartz bricks to build up the walls all the way around. So we're just going to go all the way around here and all the way up the stairs as well. So there you go, but don't worry about the roof looking a bit weird just now, that doesn't matter too much. Now we're going to come over to this window, we're going to come one back from the edge of the wall and we're going to start putting in our stairs. So we're going to have one, two and three going up switch to the slabs, put the slabs in for five going along this way, so same as our other stairway. Then on this edge we're going to do another double stair here going one, two, three and four. Then once we get up here we're going to switch to our slabs once again and we're going to count one, two, three, four, five and six. Then we are going to basically line up with the edge here and we're going to go in a straight line all the way at the end there and all the way to the end over there. And then fill in the bit in between. So there we've got that. Now come to this far end. Count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. And then bring this along until it connects with the opposite wall over there and then fill in all the bit in between that. Now this perfectly connects up so we can now go out and enjoy our lovely balcony here and enjoy the view. But anyway, back to the build. So if we come back into here, what we're going to next do is just tidy up this bit of wall here so that there's not a gap in between it. We'll make that nice and neat and then we'll also put a doorway in here. So let's count that as one, two, three, four, five on the sixth, seventh and eighth. We'll just put a quick three by three doorway in. So we'll tidy up in here as well the walls too. Don't forget that bit. Then we're going to head up and take the stairs just up one more bit. So we're going to come to the edge here, grab our polished andesite stairs and go one, two, just another double wide. And so we're going to put another so that second one and the third and four. And then we are going to go for our polished andesite slabs again. Just five across as usual. Then we'll spin round and we'll come up this time for three. So another double wide. One, two and three. Then we're just going to repeat the same floor up here. So with our floors in place here, we're going to come down to the doorway into the main building and we're going to come back one from the doorway and we're going to place down two stairs next to each other and we're going to build these up to a height of three. Then we're going to come behind them and we're going to build this two wide by four because this is not going to be a five wide stair, it's just going to be a four wide stairs and let's see have to do that temporarily. Then we're going to come up this side here, if I can actually ever get these to place correctly. We're going to come up for a total of four. So that is one, two, three, and then we'll have to break some blocks here to allow us to get up and put in four, which brings us, as you can see, level with the existing stairway, just like so. Now we're going to come to here, we're going to come one back from this one and we're going to do this time four going up here. So one, two, three and four. Then this time we're just going to make this one wide and come along again for four and then we're going to go up here this time for three. So here we go, just putting in the third one and as you can see once again, it lines up perfectly with this bit here. Now of course all these staircases and things they are going to be in case but again that's something we're going to come to do later on. So there we go you can take away these temporary blocks and things but we've got our stairs in place over here. So we've just got a little bit left to do to finish putting these floor plans in place.
Now you're going to grab your smithing tables and we're going to come out two here just in this corner edge bit and we're going to come this way for nine. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Then we're going to come this way as well for nine. One, two, three, nine. And we're going to double this up as well. And just like that. Then we're going to come to the very edge block here and we're going to come out one, two, three. We're going to fill in this bit here going to fill in this here and then we're just going to fill this in all the way until it reaches the wall there we are now you'll see that this is uh, correct because you'll see we've got space to put in a wall here that's going to surround the edge of the stairway now we'll may come along tweak bits like this as well later on but this pattern is exactly what you want to then repeat whoops uh, on the next level up so on this level here we want the same thing in place so here we are with it repeated again on the top and if you come down to this layer here and you count in from the stair one two three where i've put this torch we can break out these two blocks here and we've actually got uh, another way to connect with the main building then also when we come along this way we can come up to the top level up here and if we come one two three four and on the fifth sixth and seventh blocks here we're going to break out three by three here we're going to pop down these stairs and this will again sort this all out when it comes to doing the detail and give us another connection with the main building and with that we have at last laid out the entire floor plan for the building so everything is here it's laid out it's ready to be interior designed the first thing we want to add to this room are some pillars we're going to do that by coming to the main front doorway here we're going to come to the left hand doorway this block and count one two three four five six seven and eight then we're going to count two over so one two and we're going to place down one quartz block here then we're going to place another one here and here and here so we've got a square of four all together now we're going to repeat the same thing on a mirror image on the opposite side so one two three four five six seven and eight and then count one two and that will again give us another place to place a pillar now our pillars are going to be made up of quartz blocks with cyan going all the way to the roof so right now i'll just show you where to place them and then you can go ahead and place them all so those are our front two pillars now we'll come back to this one here and this time we're going to count up from 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 then again go 1 and 2 and place this one here so that's going to be another pillar now count one two three four five six seven and eight and that'll give us another pillar here and these pillars are going to go out the side and we're going to be able to cut through the edge of here and use them as nice supports for this building now for our final two pillars we want to have a total of 18 in between them so one two three and 18 and here we're going to place another pillar then one two three four five six seven and eight should give us the pillar in the right place so let's have a check make sure we've got that yeah it's looking aligned here and it's looking aligned here excellent so now what you're going to do is build up these pillars out of cyan terracotta going all the way to the top now with these ones just build it all the way to the top with these ones when you reach this level here and this level here you have to cut the stair out of the way to build it all the way up make those bits quartz as well where it touches the quartz stairs so cyan all the way up with little quartz rings if you like here and here and here and here as you go up with these ones too so here is all of our pillars in place with the white around them and the one behind here as well all looking really good now the next thing we're going to do is add a pattern on the floor made out of bone blocks now here's the design for the pattern so if you come to this pillar here come one two out in the diagonal draw a little bit like this 
come one, two on the diagonal, one, two in the diagonal, then one, two, and three on the diagonal, and draw this. And you just want to mirror this pattern, going out the same way on this side, on this side, and on this side. And then you're just going to draw a line with the bone blocks in between them. So you get lots of big rectangles, one, two, three, four of them all together with a cool pattern on the floor. So just take this pattern, flip over, and bone block it up. And it's just the coolest noise, isn't it? <laughs> Here's our beautiful bone block pattern on the floor. So that is looking really nice. Now the next big task that I'd like us to do is to put on some railings because these go in a lot of places. Now railings are made up of iron bars and grey carpet. So you just put iron bars down on top of these white blocks here and put grey carpet on top like so. So you can see we can put it here, here, all around here, anywhere where there's an upside down quartz stair you want to put this down. Now a couple of things to note as you go along. This edge of stair here, what to do is just put upside down stairs in front of there so that you can continue the rail effect going up those stairs there. So you'll find that and you'll find there's another set like this somewhere as well. Up at the top here, ow. right here you want to put the stairs upside down here for this railing. Also while we're up at the top here, these windows, what you want to do is break out these four by two blocks in front just like this, put upside down stairs around the edge and then put a railing on top of it like so. So just duplicate that there, that's how you deal with it. So again remember railings all along here, all here, everywhere there's upside down stairs and the other window bit to finish off is over here in front of this big window. You're going to take out a 3 by 5 area in front of it, upside down stairs around there. And you want to do the same on this window and get your railings in. So we're going to be placing a lot of railings all around this building. There's all our lovely rails in position. Now we'll drop back down to the ground floor. We're going to come in between the pillars here and what you want to do is come three back from this edge. This is one corner, so three in from this edge, another corner, three in from this edge, another corner, and three in from this edge. And this is going to give you an 11 by 11 space. Now you need to first of all dig out this entire space, all the middle of it, this 11 by 11 square. Now we're going to go around the edge of this square with stairs, quartz stairs, just the regular way around. So just like that, so that's just our one to start. So just do this around the inside, all the way around. Once your stairs are in place, you can come down underneath and handily we are accessing the basement to be able to make this a little bit easier. And now along the entire bit underneath there, you're going to place this uh, light blue concrete. And then you're also going to place it, you can get rid of this one because you won't see it another row on the inside, so all the way around underneath there, then you come one in on this side, do an inside row, and then the last thing we need is one underneath. So you'll continue this line all the way around, draw this all the way around, and then fill in the center bit with the light blue, just like that. There we go, and once you've put this, added this bit in, you're then going to build a four high five by five quartz basically square in the center and on this pedestal here we're going to put a statue but before that you're going to fill this area here with water. Now before you do that, you because this does open up onto the basement and just in case it goes anywhere, you might want to use sea lanterns at this point to light up, do things like maybe light it up in the corners. Obviously the Fortnite build isn't really worried about lighting and mob spawning and things. Um, so you want to look for any way you can really to add any lighting in, in any sort of position that you can find it. So feel free to do that at this point and then fill this entire thing including up to there because we can waterlog the stairs uh, with our water. So with our fountain area filled in with water we're going to put in the statue. Now the statue we're going to build is the same statue that we've got outside of here. So if you haven't already watched the last episode, then go back and check that out so you can learn how to build the statue. But essentially what we're doing is we're going to use smooth sandstone stairs and cut sandstone in place 
of the uh, stone brick on here so it's going to be a kind of sandy colored one this uh, ball on top is going to be made out of gold blocks instead of iron and we're going to use birch fence instead of the old iron bars there but other than that it's exactly the same then we've got pl pressure plates to put on the top as well just to add some detail and stop spawning so i'm going to go ahead and build that now on the inside so there's our mighty atlas holding up the golden world and i actually decided in the end to make this smooth all smooth sand so no cut involved i just think it looks nicer so that's really good and the downstairs is coming together now i think the next thing we want to focus on are windows now the windows they're all kind of pretty similar or sort of riffs on a common theme so i thought we could make one together then i'll add in a bunch uh, and then we can look at the slight differences in between so what we're going to go for is we are going to get pillars going up the outside so we place this in as a temporary block and obviously it'll be slightly some of the windows are thicker than others one downside to working with quartz isn't it that it, it easily easily breaks you break more blocks than you mean to it's kind of like having um haste on so we're gonna have this come up here to the top of the window good so let's see on the bottom we have gone one bit of pillar below this block so let's go one above it and we can call that the top uh, then we'll put another pillar like this in the opposite side so there we have it now on both sides now i think that what we maybe want to do is above the window itself we want to put in a sea lantern because we need to look for lots of places to try and get lighting in so we'll get a bit of lighting here and this will make the windows really nice and bright no quartz pillar not you so we'll put one at the top and the bottom and then we'll put shall we say a stair like this and we'll put a quartz slab on either side of the window like so then if we come down to the bottom we'll just repeat the same pattern Okay, they've got it on the top and the bottom and we're just going to add a, a regular stair in front of the sea lantern and this stair in front of the sea lantern there and that should give us some nice lighting in here so let's uh do the bit of a reveal break this away and see what we think of this wind oh hello <laughs> what are you doing there now i'm not sure about this window on some of the bigger ones i think it'll be easier because i think they're a bit chunkier see it looks good from over here when I get a bit closer, it looks, or look at it from this side, it kind of look like it looks like something should be in between those two blocks there. So I might consider adding glass. But I think that's a, a good frame to begin with for the windows there, surrounded by pillars with the stairs and things there. So let's go ahead and we'll put that in place around that window and this window, these two windows over here, these ones up here. We can play around with the same thing on this one here on these ones up there let's not worry about these bits for the moment we can also do a similar thing with some of these big windows uh, we've already got the pillars going up and down the side so we can just use stairs and slabs to finish off the tops and bottoms of those so let's go ahead and deal with those now and then i'll come back and show you some of the different variations of windows that we can use in this gigantic area so we now have a whole bunch of different window designs to check out. Uh, the first bit I wanted to show you was this uh, large window here. Now one thing I added in between the glass and the bars were these sea lanterns with the trapdoors on top. And it's the same underneath there's trapdoors, uh, if you can see underneath as well. And on the top we've just used some stairs just to do and slabs to do this kind of design here again and getting some of these in the top and the other slight change i made to the floor was instead of cutting out just a bit of the window i decided to from the edge of this pillar here to along here and along here cut this balcony bit out make this a whole big bit so the windows can have a bit of space to uh, breathe because these ones i think over here look quite good but they are quite they do feel quite tight and again we've just done quite a simple bit on top here just variations of the same kind of design doing them around i'm also starting to put little bits of light in here and there so we'll drop through not the conventional way to do it show you the kind of bottom of this one here again we've gone stairs and slabs around there embedding a lot of lights in there 
where we can as well. Uh, not always covering the lights with the trapdoors, but trying to where I can. Another slightly different design. Again, you might want to go with all the same design for every window. I've just gone with a bit of variety here. Here's one design that I quite like with these trapdoors here. It's a pity you can't get the iron ones to go flat without powering them somehow. But this is an interesting design here. And then a slight variation on it here. We keep the glass on the outside, but we still have that sea lantern kind of in the middle. But a slightly different design. And it's just the same throughout the build. We've just done very similar styles of windows up here and around here. And I've done, for the underneath of this one, we've put quite a lot of light. So this entranceway is going to be quite well lit up. So that's the kind of design I've gone there. And then these, yep. You've seen these kind of designs already. And then again, slightly different over here with the upside down stairs in the middle bit here. I think this one looks quite good, quite well finished off. And I've left a little space here to let us get underneath so that we can start setting lights into the ground. It's quite hard to do it when you build above water so we can get lights set down at this depth here that I quite like for some hidden lighting as we go around. So that's all of our many windows for the most part, completed. Now we're going to come up to the very top floor. We've got two smaller pillars to add in. We're going to come to this corner banister here and we're going to count along one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And here on the seventh one, we're going to place a block, place two above it and one on either side to make a plus shape. And this is going to be a pillar and you're going to bring this pillar all the way up to the roof. Now you might want an odds but it's going to intersect with this. That is good because it's going to help this to look like it's actually got something to help support it up. Now we don't just want to do a pillar here on this side. We want to do one in exactly the same place in the mirror image counting seven along from the edge of there on the opposite side too and build it all the way up till it hits the roof. There's our lovely pillars in place. Now we're going to come along and Get ourselves up and build these kind of, I don't know what we call them, decorative like balcony bits. They're not balconies you can stand on, they're just decorative. But they still look really cool. So we're going to come up to the top, we're going to count one, two, and then on the third block, we're going to place one of these fellas, just one in front of what's there. Now on either side of it, we're then going to place in, and this is harder to do on scaffolding because you got to crouch now. We're going to place two on either side so that it comes across for a total of five. So that's two on that side and our one on this side. Then our next bit is going to stick out by one. So let's find a good position to stand in to do this. So our next one is going to come and stick out just by one more like this. And our next row is going to stick out one more like that. Then we obviously want to repeat this on the other side. So if this row stick out by one, the next row stick out one behind it. And then from this bit behind here, you can just fill that in until it reaches the wall. And then obviously fill all the rest of this in in the center. So mirror that over there and fill in this whole bit and it'll kind of give you this semi-circular balcony bit. That's the full balcony bit in place in there. Now what we're going to do is break out this back line, one in on either side, and we're going to put some sea lanterns in here to illuminate things with our trapdoors on the top of them like so. Now another thing you might want to do up here um, around the front bit where maybe it's still dark is to put yourself down some string. You might want to cover the whole thing in string because uh, you, you will see up here but you won't be up here just to prevent any kind of spawning. Now the other thing to finish this off is to get yourself quartz stairs and go around the edge of it with quartz stairs and put yourself a quartz slab on top of it. Then once you've got all that in place, that going around and we'll obviously do the same thing on the other side. This underneath bit here, we're going to put ourselves in some, not slabs, some upside down stairs. And don't worry about the door, we'll fix this when we come to do the doors. And this is just what's going to cover the edge of that. Now we can also come out to the edge here and it's up to you. You can put it like that, which I think looks quite nice, or just the normal way for the last one. So once you do that, that will be this bit finished and then just copy the same thing on the other side. Ooh, it's night time. 
There's our two balconies, our things in position there, looking nice. Now we've got two more to place, one here and one here. Once again, they're both identically made, so we'll just have a look at one, then repeat the other ones together. So with this one, we're going to grab our smithing tables again. Same height, so on the third block down is where we're going to begin. And what we're going to do is place two in front there. It's hard to crouch, place, there we go. Uh, one sticking out the front, and that's the very front bit. And then we'll put one sticking out the side there. Now let's get ourselves up. It's a little bit easier to do once we're on board. Okay, so now we're on board. We've got this one sticking out the top. We're coming two in this direction. And then we're going to stick out one when it comes to here. We're going to stick out one again. So that is giving us one two three so we're going to basically do four five six so we've got one two three fourth one sticking out fifth so one two three four five and then let's stick it out one more time to the sixth now if we pull this back it will connect up nicely hopefully with the wall and of course, remember that we'll be designing this in the same way as the other one. So remember this pattern, stick out one in front of the pillar here, stick out two over here, then one, two, three, four, five, all in the diagonal, well, that's six all in the diagonal there, and then come back. Because what we want to do is do this exact pattern on the opposite side, going across the front of the pillar, fill the whole bit in, and you're just going to repeat this exact same design that you've done there on here, and over there as well and this will look really cool especially from the bottom looking up there are all four of our things in place and looking awesome they really finished this off a little idea i had as well because i don't quite have enough string to spawn proof this entire area and things are appearing up there as if you were going to use this for a base this would make a pretty cool mini mob farm you could use these as your spawning platforms you could make these pillars a little bit bigger so you could put water tubes in them or something so you could funnel them down into an area kill chamber below or something yeah, it could be pretty cool um and also th this might drive you mad um it, it, but it's supposed to be like that so don't think you've done anything wrong this is not like exactly in the middle of that it's not not supposed to be they are lined up in a kind of different way but that's part of the design and i also want to show you what we did here this intersects the window so behind the window itself we put two sea lanterns and then we just use this pattern here to work around the windows but it's nice it adds a kind of like shape to the edge of this room and of course my favorite view is indeed from underneath i just love the way you see all these different curves and shapes in the roof and yeah it looks looks excellent really really cool so we now have just another bit that's a bit similar to that to do here um, and that is going to be here on this edge at the bottom where we've got these two curved windows you don't need to worry about the other curved windows because they reach all the way to the top of the roof but with this one here what we want to do is build ourselves another platform quite similar to that one we're going to start with a sea lantern in front of this pillar here then we're going to break out this block underneath the glass and place ourselves in a row of three of those then we're going to place one here and then come up for another four so that's three and then if we break out this one we'll get a four ah quartz y all right and i probably oh i do i have one thank goodness okay four and then we're going to come out again onto this side of it here and then in front of the pillar we'll come one two three like so and then we're just going to come out one on the end here and in fact why don't we make this one here a lantern like this right then once we've got this in place i think it might look better like that yeah so we'll make that the edge there we're going to take a set of upside down stairs all the way around from here to there and then we're going to put something underneath but let's for right now put this same pattern that we're seeing here on the opposite side over there and put our upside down stairs along it here we go that's our two little balcony bits put in and boy i'm i glad to have gotten that little 
section of bits done. Now what we can do is our one of our last big finishing details for a year before we can get down to the nitty gritty fun little things is we're going to go along on the bottom of all of these red things with stairs. So just to show you this was the pattern we did something slightly different here with slabs just instead of stairs because I just thought they looked quite big. But what we're looking to do underneath all of these red balconies is what we've essentially done up on this roof bit here. We're wanting to go with stairs just underneath where the red bits are, like we've done up here, but we want to do it on all of these bits down here. And we'll also build out a little bit here, and I'll show you the design we'll use for that to hide the stairs. Oh, look at this Enderman again. The Endermen are totally ruining all my terraforming outside. They just keep trolling me all the time. But yeah, let's add that on. It's a big detail to do. So grab your quartz stairs and get a place in. There it goes. And what a difference this little finishing touch makes to the overall appearance of the whole place. It just makes it look fantastic. So you can see, just like we described, we did the stairways going underneath there. You might want to take a look at this stairway and see what we did there. We just covered up the silver stairs, the polished andy stairs with these. So you're just basically using slabs or stairs, mostly stairs, to finish off things. So this again is where the stairs jut out from the top. So we've just done stairs again to cover it up and duplicate the same thing over on the other side. Then again, just nice finishing touches all around the top edges there. This one is quite chunky because of the, the way the stairs are, but you just have to, to work with it. But again, a real nice look now that it's all done. And I'm gonna have to get enough string because it's, I can hear monsters on this platform above. Always talking to me. And again, yep, all looking nice here. This was uh, from the original bit, but that's all the underneath of the stairs bits done, including around here on this little bit as well, underneath where all the red is. And isn't the red just a great, these smithing tables that are great texture, just it's all looking really nice. So next finishing touch that we're going to do to here is we need to sort out the stairs in some positions, in certain positions we can see the edge of the smithing table and that's not so great. So what I suggest that we're going to do is we're going to fill this whole section on every bit in with the polished blackstone. I guess it's the closest to this texture there. So we'll just do that on every level so that it all looks the same and nice and neat. So let's do that now. There we go. We can see them down there on the side, just on all the sides. I just basically made them one wider than the doorway but never coming further forward than the stairs themselves. And that's worked fine. It's a way to neaten things out. Now we want to put in some doorways on all these doors. We're mainly going to use this dark oak door. So I'm just giving you the example of this one here, and then we can pop to the outside and we get a nice door like that. So we'll do the same one on the other side. Then we'll do similar things using the same kind of design for doors, places like going out into here. Helps if you choose the right item. There we go. So we can get little single doorways like that. That's quite good because it works as its own trapdoor, <laughs> thanks to this design. Uh, so that's very good. Um, so we'll do that on all of the doorways. These are not doorways. We're not putting doors in where the stairs are or on this bit over here or in these larger areas. It's just like the doors, the single ones that are going along there, the ones on the edges as well. So let's go play some doors. Now that our doorways are in place, we're going to start adding little details. Here's the first one I wanted to show you. The first thing I've done is move this doorway, as you can see, two further up so we can place it more neatly with the pattern. And this is supposed to be like the security thing that scans you as you come in. It's very simple to make. You just put down white concrete with the quartz stair in front of it. And then this is a little thing we use using one of the mods that I love, the Statues by Stick God. Now this is a, a pretty new update to it and it allows you to make item frames invisible. However, I'm having problems getting mine to work, so I actually need to use a command to make it invisible. Um, it's just very new, and I haven't quite f figured out what I've done wrong, but it's a really good thing to use for details because the item frames 
basically most of the time when you put them you don't want to see them so that makes a little security thing so we build one here and then we're going to build one on the other side and move the doorway up here we go that's the second one put into place and correctly lined up now the other place you'll want to do this is also down here at the entrance so just line up with your center block in the entrance and place down one in the center then just one one inside of the pillar on both sides so we can be scanning the people that are coming in this direction now another thing we need to add in are some storage crate type things so these are going to be iron blocks then we're going to use black stone buttons or dark what do they call them polished black stone buttons for either side there to be like handles and then this just for something on the top and we we'll build them like too high but we'll also build them maybe like one high as well like this and we'll just place them they go kind of randomly around the place so i'll place a bunch of them and then we'll have a look at where they all are yeah looking good so there we are and on this side we went with this one kind of lying on its side like this this one facing up that way and then the other place you need to put one is just down there next to that other door this little storage container now we'll grab red concrete warped button and the crimson button and right here we're going to place ourselves a vending machine and these are great the colored buttons they work really well for it just a very simple basic vending machine now we're going to come over here and we're going to take care of the desks so let's get our white concrete ready for this one now we're going to come here this is the center block here so let's see we're going to come here and place one two then one two three so you got our center block there and one two this is going to form our desk now a diorite wall going to form the base of our chair with a little quartz stair just on top of it like so now we also need our warp trap door and our dark oak now the warp trap doors we're just going to place them flat down on top of the desk there and we're going to use a trap door if we put it yeah this way and flip it up it's going to be like our little computer desk now a little finishing touch we need for this is a clock which looks a lot like the agency seal i think and we place that in there make that invisible oh maybe need to stand a little bit closer there we go and that is our desk so we want one in exactly the same place on this opposite side here lined up exactly the same way there we are two lovely desks in position now the next thing we're going to do is two of the smaller details we are going to put in some benches so if we take one here for example we'll do things you can vary the size and shape of these but three of those iron bars just with three white carpet on the top makes a little white and this is the kind of leather covered benches that they have in the map and you can put these in a lot of different places that's just how you make them i'm going to place a lot and then i'll show you where i put them all and then we can also do our plant pots that are similar to the ones on the outside where we use our white map that we made for the ghostbusters one many episodes ago and then if we now make these invisible this should look really nice now the only downside i think to using maps is that they get kind of weird when you look at them from a bit of distance but i think in here look okay and see how nice does that look as a white plant pot really good and then we place a fern in it give it the bone meal and it'll look good so we're going to place plant pots and benches all around the place those are the materials and i'll get them done and show you where they go so here's the locations of all of our various little couches for relaxing and our plant pots with various ferns i just like the fern the green color it's uh, i think it's nice suits well with the map as always i've tried to make things as accurate as possible to the map with a couple of little changes just like particularly down here where I just thought there was a bit of dead space so you can see we've got a lot of these benches and things sitting around here nothing on these little levels up on here we've got more and again you can just take these designs and place them wherever you think you'd like them the most if you're designing this for your own base or if you're trying to make it accurate to the map whatever it is you're doing so you can see we've got a bunch up here too now the next thing i'd like to do is go ahead and try and get some lighting get rid of as many of these torches as we can <clears throat> i'm going to start by doing hidden lighting by probably along the edges 
for the Starks. You can see everywhere that we've got these upside down stairs, we could break them out, put a sea lantern and put some carpet over the top of it to hide it. So I'm going to place a lot of hidden lighting and that'll let me work out where we'll then need to put in some more visible kind of hanging lights and things. We now have an epic amount of lighting in position around the area. So we've gone for lighting underneath where you've got the carpet here, the central bit here. We've gone for quite a lot of it on the edges. We've used this design quite commonly. The sea lantern with trapdoors above and below it and upside down stairs on either side in some positions. We've gone for some of these hanging ones with a polished andesite chain sea lantern kind of plus shape underneath with some buttons on it for a bit of a hanging light. We've gone for these strip lights in a few places, same kind of connector but with sea lanterns and upside down stairs in the middle. And I've managed to light up most of it. It's quite difficult to light it all up, if I'm being honest, though. And there's been a couple of hairy situations. Within the stairway again, going up, we've used the same lighting technique, along with lighting underneath here, some above the doorways you can see there as well. Now up here is where it's a little bit dodgy. Here we've got a nice big strip light here. A bit encroaching, but they do work well. I mean, we do need lighting because this is survival mode. I, you know, I built it in creative, so I didn't have all this lighting in mind. But it is, whoa, <laughs> it is needed. Especially, it's probably more needed to be d done up here. <laughs> There's another hanging light that you can see there looking good. And a hanging light over there too. So these are the kind of lights. You can go ahead and use them if you like. I also tried this one once. Oh, there's a skelly. The uh, warp trapdoor with the levers on either side. So it's not too bad. The closer it gets to nighttime, though, the deadlier it does get. Now, the last thing we need to do is to place a big hanging banner coming down from here and there as well. So here's how the banner at the top of it is going to look. So it's quite easy to do. We just get ourselves the flower charge banner pattern. We're going to get ourselves some white dye. We're going to dye that one. Just white with the flower charge. Then we put the blue and we do the same thing again. Then we take away the flower charge and we put in a white circle like so. And that gives us the type of banner that we are looking for. Then we just want light blue black, blah, 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 light blue banners for the bottom. And I'll go and hang these and show you where they go. And there she is, just there. That banner on top with two, three in total light blue banners underneath it. One there and one just up there. And we've used the diorite walls as the thing that you hang on because you need to have something in order to hang it on so let's uh, fly up we'll have a little look at it from higher up dodging any more oh boy <laughs> see unfortunately the better i get at spawn proofing some areas the worse it becomes in other areas oh they're fighting themselves oh it's chaos now we're gonna have social spawning and oh it's gonna be a disaster these skeletons are like in a, in a pitch battle with each other here. And they're basically doing the, the naked gun thing of like shooting from behind the smallest battle. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's kind of funny, but also not funny. So let's have a look at their <laughs> banner up here. Oh, look at this. There's whole squad to them. Oh, no. Ow, ow, ow. I fell, I fell. There it is. That's all we wanted to have a look at. The lovely banner there. And with that, ow. Dude, oh, I thought I had my bow in my hand. I was like pulling my bow, but it's actually a rocket. Ah, this has been tough, but doesn't it look great? That's the whole place complete. And the other quick thing I wanted to mention about the lighting is I tried to build it in such a way that you can't really see it when you're standing looking at it. This is my favorite view of the building. Definitely. And so I tried when I built these lights here. And like the ones that are up there, you don't really see them when you're in the central area. So that is looking real good.
And that is where we're going to leave things for today's episode. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I have, as always, loved spending uh, this time with you. Join us for our next part where we'll be moving on to the buildings uh, on the side, the smaller buildings, and putting in more details and hopefully doing a bit more lighting up because I see you up there, Mr. Skeleton. And it's Mr. Creeper that I'm most worried about because Quartz does not have blast resistance. But you take care out there, folks, and I'll see you next time for some more awesome fun in Minecraft. Bye-bye!